the rest of the story. There it was again. That dreadful sound, an infant screaming somewhere in the dark. But then Gail realized he was dreaming again. And again, as always before, he was sitting upright in bed in the blackness of the night, his arms clutched about his trembling body. Would the nightmares never stop? Would they torment Gail until he died? The unbearable thought reminded him once more of where and when he had first heard those cries on a ship bound for London in 1851. Gail taught school in Indiana as a young man. Then he and his wife set out for the Texas Territory to claim 400 acres along the Colorado River, and then war broke out with Mexico. Gail became editor of the Telegraph and Texas Land Register. On the front page, April 21, 1836, he immortalized Colonel Sidney Sherman's spontaneous battle cry, Remember the Alamo. It was he who immortalized that phrase, Remember the Alamo. And still for more years than Gale could recall, he had been intrigued by an idea. There was no refrigeration in those days, you see, and it meant that food spoiled rapidly. How then might one preserve food to make it safe under circumstances when fresh, uncontaminated food was just unavailable? So after the war was over, Gale began experimenting with various food preservation processes. What he came up with was something called meat biscuits. They were not the most delicious things in the world, but they remained safely edible for a long time. The real problem with them was that nobody wanted them. Both the Army and the Navy turned them down. The public at large was uninterested. Until out of the blue came the thrilling news that Gale's new product had been awarded the Great Council Medal at the International Exhibition in London. So, he boarded a ship to go to London and accept the honor. It was during that voyage that he first heard those screams. For the only source of milk for the passengers was a pair of diseased cows in the vessel's cargo hold. And there were babies on board, babies who drank the diseased milk, and who now, clinging to their distraught mothers, were dying. Day and night, day and night, Gail heard their cries of anguish until merciful death eventually took them. But the sound of their tortured little voices would not die with them, that sound continued to haunt Gale year after year in daily reflections and in dreadful, dreadful dreams. He was 54 when at last the voices grew silent. For it was then, after interminable experimentation and eventual triumph, that Gale was granted a patent for a unique process of preserving milk, dehydration in a vacuum that would revolutionize the dairy industry forever after. You never knew the Indiana school teacher who helped to forge the Republic of Texas, who made famous the shout that yet rings in our ears, remember the Alamo, but you know the dream of salvation that was born in a nightmare, a dream called evaporated milk, and the company that emerged because a man answered cries in the night, a haunted hero. You've always known of Borden's milk. Now you have met Gail Borden. Now you know the rest of the story.